Hi, I'm Father Scott Vanderveer, and I wanted to share with you something that got my attention recently. I heard that a philosopher by the name of Ken Wilber said that there are four tasks that religion is intended to give us throughout our life cycle. He said religion is supposed to help us grow up, clean up, wake up, and show up. Grow up, clean up, wake up, and show up. And I thought a lot about how I, I see those four different movements a lot in people's lives. And I do think that there is something really meaningful for us to be able to look at our own journey and see how has religion helped me with this? How has my faith practice been a part of my growing up? cleaning up, waking up, and showing up. So why don't we take them in order? Because I think he intended for them to be kind of done in order. They're, they are tasks that work best when we start with grow up. Grow up is meant to be a chance for us to move from our terrible twos, so to speak, into a better and fuller way of living as a human person. That kind of toddler experience of life is, is very common for a lot of us. Uh, it's, it's kind of the, the thing that's always going on inside of us, but we would never say out loud, mine, get away from that, that's mine, the way a toddler would say. Or um, that, that delight that we sometimes take in, no, my way, I want it to be done my way. One of the jobs of religion is to teach us that the way the toddler views the world is not the truth of how the world works. The toddler thinks that she or he is the center of the universe. And we are called through our faith practice to recognize that there is only one God of heaven and earth. And I am not it. I'm not God. I am. I'm one of God's creatures. I'm a child of God, but I'm not in charge. Religion is meant to help us know this by giving us things like commandments so that we have to align our lives to a larger principle, so that we have to stay connected to a bigger purpose than just what I want. It's kind of like recognizing that there is a small me that is not big enough to contain the truth of life, but there's a larger us that allows us to do that. And when Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he is inviting us onto a journey. I am what you need to know about how to live this life beautifully and successfully. And so we learn that doing it my way isn't gonna work doing it Christ's way will. So religion is in part about growing up. Religion is also about cleaning up. Cleaning up your act is something that a lot of parents will say to their kids, you need to clean up your act. And I think a lot of us can recognize that there's not a lot of explanation that's needed here. We once we know what it takes to live as a successful participant in the dance of life, once we recognize the give and take that is part of being a human person, once we recognize that there's one God in the universe and I'm not it, we've got to clean up our act in all of the areas of life where we are ignoring those truths. Any time in life when we are acting as though it is all about us, or if we are doing the kind of things that make anger too central in our life, are drenched in pride or feeling like our way is the only way, whenever we're vain or dishonest or envious of other people, whenever we're letting fear run the show or we're greedy or we're gluttonous or we're lustful, or we are not taking advantage of opportunities and giving into laziness, we need to recognize that that is not 
the potential that we were made to fulfill, that there is a lot of realignment that could happen. So one of the ways that a friend tells me it really works for her is to think of her driving in life and that there, there is a lane that God has asked her to drive in and all of the markings on the pavement are very bright. She uses what she calls bright lines to stay in her lane. Might we consider that our faith is giving us bright lines that are meant to help us stay in our lane and successfully drive on this course? Another friend tells me that his main goal in life is to have a beautiful obituary. He wants to have a gorgeous obituary where it talks about all of the wonderful things he did and how everyone loved him and how he helped everyone. And he said, the only way that obituary is going to happen is if I actually live it now. I don't want anybody to have to lie at my funeral. And after all, people probably wouldn't believe it anyway if they know me. So maybe that's another lens that could be helpful. Let's live in a way that no one has to lie at our funeral, but is actually able to say, she was one of the best people I ever met. Oh, I just loved him. Oh my goodness, how he made the world a better place. We need to grow up and then clean up. The next thing that Ken Wilber says is part of religion is waking up. Waking up is maybe what some people would think of as enlightenment. Um, it's something that is available to all of us to wake up to the true reality of life. Here's the first step to waking up, I think. It's recognizing that there is an invisible world that is bigger and more real than our visible world. That to me is a big part of waking up, recognizing that the world that we can see is a tiny portion of what really exists. And that all of the things of God that we long for, the, the angelic realms, heaven, uh, the, the energy network that keeps us all connected to one another, all those meridians of care and connection and uh, life that keep us as one, all of that's invisible. So we have to recognize that the invisible world is bigger and more consequential than the world that we get to see. And we also have an opportunity to recognize that we always thought our soul was a tiny, tiny little place in our body that no one could ever get to, that we have a soul that's inside of us, given to us by God. And we are able by waking up to realize, actually, it's the opposite. Our soul is bigger than our body. We are not souls in a body. We are bodies in a soul. When we start to realize that, we are waking up to a reality that, once again, the physical world that we experience is just a whisper of the power and significance of the invisible world. Once we wake up, we realize that those invisible realities are all that really matter. We don't spend time on trivia. We don't spend time trying to build a permanent empire in this realm where everything is passing. Once we realize that everything here is passing, we stop trying to build an empire in this realm. As the great monk Thomas Merton once said, what a pity it would be to spend our entire life climbing the ladder of success, working so hard to climb rung by rung only to get to the top and realize that the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall the whole time. <laughs> what a pity that would be. To climb the ladder of success only to realize that it's leaning against the wrong wall and then to have to climb all the way down before we can even start from scratch and start to climb the real ladder. So we have to grow up. We have to clean up. We have to wake up. And then our religion is meant to help us show up. 
I got to see people showing up recently for a loved one. Someone in our parish just went through the tragedy of losing a friend to suicide. And this family was devastated by the loss. I suggested that they come to church so that I could anoint them, that I could offer them the sacrament of the sick, the anointing sacrament that allows people who have heart sicknesses, physical sicknesses, spiritual sicknesses, mental sicknesses, that they can be strengthened. And so when I, when I invited them to the church, I thought I would be there with the three of them. Instead, there were almost 30 people there. They had this incredible pit crew of people that wanted to be there with them because they knew they were hurting, because they cared about them and felt their pain. And so when I anointed these people, they were surrounded by dozens of supporters, people who loved them and wanted to help them and wanted to provide comfort to them. That's showing up. Religion is not in its fullness if it hasn't caused us through our transformation to care about others enough to show up for them. That is why it is not enough for our spiritual practice to make us whole. We have to want to go out and share it. In the 12 steps, you spend the first 11 steps on your growth. And then the 12th step is to go out and bring this message of healing to those who still suffer. The other way that we show up is by being our authentic selves. Once you've grown up and cleaned up and woken up, you don't have to put on a mask anymore. You don't have to put on a persona. You don't have to any longer pretend to be something that you're not or try to puff yourself up to impress people. The author Brene Brown says, we have to remember that we're called to show up as we are, not to puff up, not to shrink, but to just be our true authentic selves. Don't puff up, don't shrink, just be your true authentic self. So religion helps us grow up, clean up, wake up, and show up. Is your religion helping you to do that? Is the religion that you're practicing, whether it's Catholic Christianity or Protestant Christianity or New Age spirituality or, or some other world religion, maybe you're practicing a, a Buddhist path or a Hindu path or a Confucian path following the Tao, whatever it is, are you experiencing growth and maturation in your life because of it? Are you aligning your choices with virtue? Are you becoming more aware of the power of the invisible world that surrounds us at all times? And are you showing up for others and presenting yourself as you really are and not as some kind of persona? Good questions for us to think about. Great Lenten reflection, but appropriate for any time because we're always on a journey and we have no idea how many years, months, days, or heartbeats we might have left. So let's make every moment count. So grateful to be with you on this journey. God bless you all.